Hi, this is Steve Palladino of Palladino Power Project, and I'm bringing you another video. Um, I want to uh, uh, focus on analyzing uh, CP tests, uh, things to look at, and uh, you know how to do it, and so forth. So um, uh, there are some nuances in 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 analyzing it that could uh, enhance the information that you you uh, gain from the CP test. Um, one thing that I suggest when doing a CP test, of course, know the purpose of the CP test. Are you doing the CP test to establish power targets for training? In which case you want to use the shoes that you typically train in and in uh, the environment uh, that uh, in which you typically train, um, meaning temperature and and um, uh, terrain, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if your purpose is uh, to establish race power targets, then you want to do the the testing in a uh, environment environmental conditions that are similar to what you anticipate for the race. And you want to use your race shoes um, and use terrain and surface that's similar to what your race will be on. Um, so you get a little bit more apples to apples com comparison. So um, understand what's the purpose of it. And then also, whether you use a spreadsheet or you're creating a note uh, attached to the file, uh, like if you wanted to add notes here, um, uh, the notes that I suggest, what is the weight setting, the stride weight setting for that particular test session? What is the uh, temperature, humidity, altitude for that session? And what shoes you, you wore? And also uh, what route that you chose, although that's, that's typically evident on the, uh, the, the map. But... Um, uh, for me, as a coach, I, I like to have that all recorded, whether it's on a spreadsheet or in uh, notes on the file. Uh, so again, um, the weight setting for the session, the environmental conditions, uh, temperature, humidity, altitude, um, the shoes worn, and, and the route, uh, ideally. Um, so then you are able, as you compare CP tests over time, you can start um, compare apples to apples. In fact, um, it's even possible on a spreadsheet to um, normalize your, your CP estimate to weight, watts per kilogram, and also to uh, a standard set of environmental conditions. So let's say you convert everything to uh, say, um, you know, 70, 68 degrees, 20, uh, 18, 18 um, C or um, 68, 70 degrees F and um, say 75% humidity. So everything gets converted to that. So your cold weather CPs get converted to that. Your hot weather CPs can get converted to that. So then you're able to compare what that uh, CP was effectively for this standard set of conditions. And by doing so, you're comparing closer to apples to apples over time. Um, maybe another video on that uh, on a later date. So let's get into the, uh, the actual analysis after again, you got to know what your purpose uh, is. You got to, um, or you should record those those fundamental um, um, references because power is relative. So you want to uh, compare, um, you know, be able to refer back to the temperature, humidity, altitude, um, and um, and even even um, another one that I didn't mention would would be your RSB or TSB, you know, what, what your, uh, how, how positive or negative you were on that particular day. So you can, again, 
as you refer back, you can you can make comparisons and, and get a, a, for a greater understanding of your CP uh, over time. So now you get this data. So what are the things that uh, you're going to do when you have this data file? Well, uh, the first thing that I suggest doing is not relying on the laps down here, but do the manual selection because sometimes um, the lap is offset relative to the actual power file. Um, and the lap may not capture your highest power. So um, here's how you do this. Um, you are going to manually select it like so. So you saw what I did here. I just sort of drag right, right click, or I'm sorry, left click and hold and drag it. Then you just uh, come up here to this blue bar until you get those side to side arrows there. That means you can drag that. So we're gonna drag that to about where that, that uh, horizontal FTP line is. And the same thing here, and so we can see 384 for three minutes and one second. So even though it's prescribed as a three minute test, um, to me, uh, if, if, you know, let me give you an example. If this runner, uh, if this runner ran exactly three minutes, there we go, it's 384, right? But the runner actually, Ran 384 for one, three minutes and one second. Now, is that one second going to make a lot of difference? Not a lot, but I want to give credit where credit is due. And so, uh, again, I will manually select so I get the, 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 the best power for, uh, for duration. And, you know, the longest, longest duration for that per, per particular power is what I want to take. So... Uh, in this case, 301 and 384. Uh, then we'll come over here to this test. And let's scroll to about there. And let's scroll to about there. Um, 346. So let's see if we can get 346 but get a longer duration. So we're going to stretch this out a little bit. Uh, still 346, and now we're up to 959. So if we stretch it out anymore, I've done, I did this ahead of the video, but if we stretch it out anymore, 10 drops down to 345. So I'm going to take that 959 and 346. All right. So that's how you do the manual selection. But while you're on the file, of course, you know, you jot those numbers down, you know, uh, 301 and 384. And this is 9.59 and 3.46. So there's a few other things that, that are important in doing the analysis. When I do it, I, I like to look at the, um, the time. And I don't, I don't look at this number here, up here, what Stride records, because they're only taking moving time. So if the runner stops and, and stands for a while, it's not going to be recorded necessarily here, but I look at these two numbers, and here we have 5509, uh, 2509 to 5507. So that's essentially 30 minutes, and that's what I like to see, at least 30 minutes. All right. Uh, so I always check, is the recovery at least 30 minutes? If it's longer, that's fine. If the runner needs longer, that's that's cool. Um the other things that I look on, look at in, uh, in terms of a nuance, I, I'm looking to make sure that these these uh, um, priming um, accelerations or these primers in here are not too close to the start here, and we can see that that um, you know it's roughly about four and a half minutes or so, five minutes. Um, yeah, no, about five, five and a half minutes or so. Um, 
So that's that's good. That's a that's an adequate amount of rest. But the person finished that and then 30 seconds later is off off. I guarantee you that they've some of their reserve work capacity has been utilized below starting point, and that is, means you're starting this test with a lower reserve work capacity than than a full tank, basically. Um, and I do the same thing on this side. So there's another bit of analysis. It's just making sure that the priming events or the priming uh, efforts are not too close to the start of the actual test. Um, here's another one which I think is really important um, is when you do this, here's, and we'll come back here and we're just going to expand that back out. doesn't have to be exactly the same, but turn on the air power. I don't care about this, the appearance here. The, quali um, the qualitative, but this, 5% air power. So if if this was 0% air power and the person's wearing a, a, using a wind pod, you know, one of the pods that started in August of 2019 or uh, uh, to current, um, then if it's 0% air power, that means that this power is is artificially low by the lack of air power um, and that could impact uh, how useful that CP is or how valid the CP is. Now let's say they're testing in race shoes and the race shoes always report much lower than their training shoes and they're testing in, in um, racing shoes for the purposes of establishing a race power target, that's fine. But if they're using race shoes that give a lower percent air power um, than their training shoes, and they're going to be using the CP for, for um, training purposes, um, you got a problem. You're going to have a, a CP that's somewhat invalid because of the lack of air power in, by using the, the racing shoes. Um, hopefully, there's, you're using racing shoes that don't impact this at all, but uh, be aware. So I always check that. I check the air power. Uh, and let's go over here. So that was 5%. Uh, typically, uh, the shorter session, because it's a higher intensity, there's, you're going faster, higher air resistance. So usually it's, it's you know, at least the same as as what you see in the long session, uh, and not infrequently, it's a little bit higher, a percent or even 2% higher than what you see in the long session, uh, test session, I should say. So here, uh, I'm, I'm coming back to here, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but I'm just, you can see 1% air power. Now, that's a little bit of a mismatch, 5% versus 1%. Um, but what I noticed in this particular file is that um, the 10-minute the session uh, has some directionality to it versus the three-minute is sort of the opposite direction. You know, it's, it, so it could be that there was a little bit of, of uh, more headwind here, more tailwind here. Um, so... In this case, that may mean that this, the short session is boosted up a little bit and the long session is, is dropped down a little bit versus totally calm conditions. This is hypothetical. And if, if that is the case, this is, is relatively higher, this is relatively lower by a percent or so, then, then the estimated CP is going to be a little bit lower than if it was calm conditions and didn't have that effect. The reverse is true. Let's say hypothetically this, this one had a, a lower air power. This one had a higher air power because of, of wind conditions, etc. cetera. Um, and so consequently, what would, this, is, this would be a little bit uh, higher. This would be a little bit lower than if it's calm condition. And consequently, CP is going to be slightly overestimated 
in that scenario because this is a little bit lower and this is a little bit higher than if it's perfectly calm conditions. Um, that's a teeter-totter effect. Um, so I always look at that and mainly, you know, this is a nuance that I'm getting into here in terms of 5% versus 1%. I'm looking to see is air power reasonably represented in both test sessions? Then that then you could go on and, and assume that your your CP estimate is going to be reasonably valid. So um, that's what I do in terms of the the um, the analyst analysis and picking apart the the uh, the, the testing again. Uh, manually select each segment, um, analyze the, the recovery duration, analyze how close priming uh, efforts are to start up a uh, test. Uh, so those, those are some of the nuances. Then you just take those numbers and you can plug them into any one of a number of, of sources. So uh, in Final Surge, there's uh, calculators and, um, and I plugged in the numbers here and we get a CP and a uh, reserve work capacity estimate uh, from that test. Or you can go to the, um, the superpower calculator that is web-based, superpowercalculator.com, um, that's web-based, and you select the, the, the CP test calculator and enter the data, as I did here, um, and we're in watts and, and hours, minutes, seconds. And here's our estimate, which is you know, essentially the same thing um, in this uh, calculator. Or if you have superpower calculator um, sheets, Google Sheets version, you just come and you select your, you know, the mode, which is analyzing a CP test. You come over here, you enter your values right here and it produces your CP estimate. The, the, the value of the superpower calculator uh, for sheets is it allows you to get into more uh, scenarios. Uh, for example, you know, if this person also trained on the treadmill and let's say, um, let's say they were, uh, their weight setting was 70 kilograms for this test and um, <clears throat> we'll go to here, and we're going to put in the air power and call this 5%. This is 1%. Um, then we go back to um, the main tab and scroll down. Not only do we see the, the CP estimate for the outdoor test, but it's also going to give you... Um, the um, what the the weight setting should be um, as well um, for a treadmill, for example, or if you wanted to, to do environmental corrections, you could do that. So, superpower calculator gives allows someone to to do CP test analysis in a little bit more advanced fashion. Um, I do have other videos on this all these, these nuances and some of these advanced use cases um, uh, in, in my um, playlist. So take a look at that. Um, so there you have it. This is how I go about analyzing a CP test. Um, manually select um, certain uh, quality control um, um, uh, analyses. Um, and then also, as you get these values, as you get this, you're going to record it along with temperature, humidity, altitude, the shoes worn, the route, the stride weight setting. Um, and even in advanced cases, you can set up a, print, uh, a spreadsheet and be able to compare watts to kilogram over time, as well as uh, normalize to standard set of environmental conditions. So there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, we'll catch you next time. Have a good day.